When you fire up DM1, the first place you land if you have stores configured and data flowing is the dashboard. The dashboard is the place for you to track your overall store performance, monitor recent measurements, and set alerts for things that might raise alarms. Of course, if you're a hands-on analyst, the only time you'll spend here is configuring dashboards for someone else. So how do you configure a dashboard? First, understand that dashboards are specific to logins. We can configure a global default dashboard for you but each user can make their own. Building one is super simple. Let's start with panels. To add a panel to the dashboard, just click on Add Panel. You pick three things to create a dashboard panel. The type of visualization, the store, and the date type. Let's quickly take a look at each viz type. I think store and date are pretty self-explanatory. Funnels allow you to see how well the store is performing in turning shoppers into buyers. Knowing store traffic is just basic knowledge. This is equivalent to your existing door counting. Not every store collects associate data, but if you do, it's gold. DM1 tracks interaction counts, interaction rates, that's the percent of shoppers in a section who talked with an associate, and interaction success rates, how often those interactions subsequently turned into a purchase. The layout tool is our favorite store viz, and it's a key part of the analytics workbench. Here, you're seeing foot traffic by store section, color-coded. Red means most traffic, blue means least. Another layout view, but now you're seeing where people actually shopped. A great side-by-side -side comparison with usage. Section performance shows you a basic funnel for each store section. Visits, which is foot traffic. Linger rate, the percentage of the foot traffic that actually spent time shopping. Considered rate, that's just a higher time threshold than linger. And attributed conversion rate what percentage of shoppers who subsequently are measured at a cash wrap. You can move panels up or down to get just the look you want. And of course, it's responsive. Tired of a view? You can remove it too. That's all there is to panels. Now, let's take a look at alerts. There are three types of alerts. KPI alerts, significant change alerts, and threshold alerts. For an alert, you always have to pick a metric, a store, and a date type. KPI alerts are the simplest, and they aren't really alerts at all. Use a KPI alert when you always want a metric to show up in the dashboard. Let's say that no matter what, you want your store conversion rate to show up on the dashboard. Reasonable, right? Like panels, you can move alerts or remove them. A significant change alert will only show when the metric you picked has changed by more than some percentage in the selected time period. As you can see, you enter the percentage, whole numbers only, don't go all 5.3 on us. Then you select whether the alert applies to positive, negative, or either type of change. That's about it. Note that when I built this alert, Nothing changed on the dashboard. Significant change alerts are only going to appear when, well, something changed. It's the same story for threshold exceeded. You can set a threshold as a ceiling or a floor. Exceeds as a ceiling, goes below as a floor. For all rate and share metrics, you enter the threshold as a whole number percentage. Of course, before you set any significant change or threshold alerts, it's probably a good idea to understand what values might make sense. Time to get a deep dive into the workbench. Check out the workbench overview or head right to the video on building reports. Until then, measure well.